Greetings, my fellow metallurgists, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Vintage Story, Episode 12, Bronze Age. So again, the plan, and I'll update the priority here, um, after making bronze. Yeah, each pile of firewood will produce four to seven charcoal and it filters down to the bottom layers first. Oh, that's good enough. So it's not stacked thing. But yeah. Uh, actually, this is almost a temp. So I'm going to pull the last peat brick out. Put it down. And put my charcoal in. So now I have a lot of charcoal and it will definitely get up to temp. The only other thing I need to do is find the tongs. Here they are. And I'm ready. So uh, to reiterate... This is 1,300 units of, of tin, bronze. 900 goes into the anvil mold. So I'll put that there. Then I'm going to do a pickaxe, pickaxe and an axe. Because the axe will allow me to make more charcoal if I need it. You know, maybe not a pickaxe. Or a regular axe. Because now that I have the charcoal, I don't really need an axe as, as much. So maybe I'll do a prospecting. Um, which is out here. So this is 900, 1,000. You know what? No, 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 I'm good, I'm good. I'm gonna pour... Yeah, I'll do a, I'll, I'll do a prospect. And then two ingot molds. And these ingot molds, one of these ingots, maybe a, maybe a weapon of sorts? So here's the thing is, um. I could also do a shield. So if I wanted like an oak shield, for instance, I would need more bronze for that though. Uh, because the, the tin bronze boss uh, requires two alone and then the hoop. Uh, the reason I wouldn't do a saw is a copper saw is cheaper. And there's no, I'm not gonna use up the durability of a saw very quickly. You generally want to make your tools in higher quality materials when you require more durability. Um, whereas things like knives, saws, scythes, shovels, they don't really, it doesn't really matter. You might as well just use the really easy to source copper because doing the really high quality saws just, you know, you're, unless you're like sawing down an entire forest, you're not going to use up the, the durability of it. You know what? I could do a. I could start the uh, the armor molds. Actually, how about how about I do that instead of putting in the ingots? So one uh, nine hundred, one thousand, and then three armor molds. Yeah, I'll just start on the armor molding. So for the armor molds, I'm going to require uh, eighteen. I think. So it's, it's quite an investment, but it's going to allow me to go into caves and not get eaten alive. Uh, so, yeah, bronze armor makes a lot of sense. Oh, it's getting, it's glowing, it's glowing, it's going to be melting soon. And higher grade metal does more damage, yeah, so weapons is really good too. Uh, maybe I want, that's a really good point. Maybe I do one ingot for Tins Bronze uh, Fox instead of three armor molds. So that I have like a decent blade. Very reasonable. Once you find armor, uh, iron. So the, um, so the thing about iron is unlike crucible metals, that can be melted in the crucible. Iron requires a bloomery, which is more effort because you have to build like a a clay bloomery, and um, it's small batches that you put into the bloomery, and they have to be melted at higher temperatures. And then once the bloomery is done, you actually have to break your bloomery and get the iron blooms. And then you take the iron blooms and you have to hammer them out into ingots. So iron. Once you get iron, it's still a lot of work to keep using iron because it, it's a more complicated process. So even when you have access to a lot of iron, 
It doesn't necessarily make sense to make all your tools out of iron, because it's so much more work to make an ingot of iron than it is to make an ingot of bronze. Ingot of bronze, you just throw a bunch of crap at a crucible and you have bronze. Uh, iron is a, a complicated, more, more complicated, more effortful, more labor intensive process, which requires uh, fire bricks and kiln firings and, you know, and, uh, and bloomeries and then hammering it out on an anvil and, you know. Uh, but one of the reasons to go straight to a bronze anvil is bronze anvils will allow you, because they're harder metal, will allow you to do iron work on a bronze anvil, whereas um, a copper anvil is too soft of a metal to work iron. So we're skipping copper uh, entirely uh, so that hypothetically we could jump to iron relatively early, uh, but I'm probably not going to find iron very easily without doing a lot of caving, and I'm not going to do a lot of caving without uh, armor and a weapon. So that's why I'm making armor molds, so that I can actually go into caves to find iron. Because going into a cave with, with no ar armor at all, I'm going to get, like, two shot by everything. And I'll, I'll never make progress. Oh, this is white hot. Yeah, it's about to go. It's about to go. And this is not all the charcoal harvest yet. I left the majority of the charcoal over in the charcoal kiln. This is just what I pulled out because I, I didn't need it all. Yeah, iron veins are, are massive, 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 yes. So once you find iron, you have a you tend to have a ton of it. Um, it's also worth noting that you're not looking for iron because you're not going to find iron. You're going to find hematite, uh, limonite, and... Uh, what is the other one? And magnetite, thank you. Yeah, and magnetite. So when you're doing your prospecting, it's not you're not looking for iron. It's same with tin, right? It's cassiterite. It's not it's not tin, right? Same with uh, uh, zinc. It's sphalerite or galena for iron uh, for lead. Copper is copper, so copper is the most straightforward. Gold is gold, but, uh, but yeah, there is a bit of a, a difference of the name. All right, this should be, this is almost done. You can see the green arrow. It's almost liquid. The other advantage of having a bronze pick is a bronze pick will allow me to actually mine things like iron or quartz, uh, which is, you know, important. Come on, you just, it's so tantalizing. You're done. Ah, oh, there it is. All right, put the tongs in my hand. And pour, baby, pour! So 900 units of tin bronze in the anvil mold. 100 units in the tin bronze pickaxe. 100 in the armor lemele mold. And then one last for the ingot for a weapon. It glows! All right, that thing is going to be glowing for a while, so I'm going um, to go be useful uh, building and actually listening to the priorities that you guys told me. So let's collect the things I need to build. Blue clay, even though there's a note of blue clay over at the base. Well, yeah, we have a bronze axe. Or a, a anvil. <laughs> Words. Bronze anvil already. So very, very pleased by that. And a pickaxe. So that pickaxe will be, I think, like twice the durability of my copper one. And then, like I said, we'll also be able to handle things like quartz. So if you, because I, I have a note of quartz right over here, I could just demonstrate real easy. Um, if you look at quartz, it will say it requires a tier three uh, tool to harvest or better. So require tier three bronze to break. So like if I try to pick it with a copper pickaxe, it nothing happens. So we hypothetically, if I start doing fire clay bricks to make a bloomery, I could actually start um, making my own glass for a greenhouse um, right now if I wanted to, uh, because I already have fire clay uh, in the base. So if I made a bunch of fire clay bricks to make a bloomery, because bloomeries are also used to fire up uh, things like 
like, um, well, not just iron, but like blister steel or quartz or uh, other other gemstones into glasses. Um, and I'm stupid and brought my tongs. Uh, another thing that I should probably do, uh, which wasn't in the poll, is to get a little bit more copper to make myself a copper saw blade, because that's going to be life changing. To get to run a, a big, um, uh, to run a decent like a, maybe a, you know, a few ingots of of copper, so that I can make um, copper bits for like door or for um, chests for storage, and then. Um, make a saw blade so I can have a bucket finally to fill up my farm fields. Cause my, my farm fields are completely reliant upon me, like manually watering it right now, which uh, is the suck. So these are path blocks, and I walk 33% faster on them. That's why I'm using them over the cobblestones so that I can move around my base. Because I plan on having kind of like an open floor type style. Because it's just more aesthetically pleasing and easier to traverse. And path blocks are pretty cheap to make. And also the two-toned, um, the two-toned construction kind of looks nice too, I think. Hey, it's raining again. So I sort of have this room envisioned in my head, but it's obviously not a vision I can necessarily share with you guys. But uh, but I think that this is going to be um, sort of like a forge area, maybe, where I'll have uh, bloomeries, possibly kilns, things like that. Um, all right, over on this end, I also want these to be path blocks. So what I'm aiming to do is just have the core of the base be path blocks. You can kind of see the move run speed of when I do path blocks. Like I'm, it's it's significant. It's really nice. Um, and then the along the walls will be uh, work facilities and storage, like chests and things. Is it in our building over a pond? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, it was voted that I build a uh, a base here. It was voted on by you guys last stream, so this is where I'm building. If, if you look at the map, it's kind of like a land bridge between two two lakes. So I'm just going to be a bridge troll. I'll channel my inner Danny DeVito. Um, the other thing about a forge and is usually your forges, your, your metalworking areas will be connected with, um, a health hammer, which is a windmill mechanized hammer to be able to make like ingots and plates and th th the like. But that also means that the room will never be enclosed because in vanilla vintage story, uh, axles, which is required for mechanic power, mechanized power, um, aren't enclosed, which means your forge area is always a, an open area. It's, um, so with that in mind, uh, I don't really care if my forge is, um, is just open to the open air because there, you'll never enclose it. It's not possible to enclose a forge. So that's another reason why I have the, the sort of po open pond spot be the forge because, uh, you might as well. Now, the other risk I have right now is uh, my crops are now accessible by farm animals because I built, so I, I'm going to have to dig, like, a pit back so that they can't just jump in and eat my stuff because I don't have a fence on this yet. 
Eventually, once I'm a little bit wealthier. So if this is um if this is the forge area, um one of the things I could do, at least for now, is to enclose this so I can sleep here safely. Uh knowing that um knowing that uh in its final iteration it won't be enclosed. Because it will need uh windmill access. Bye bye shovel. The plan is to maybe have a door. How expensive are the two by two doors? Let me check. I don't want, in the sake of symmetry, I don't necessarily, you know, maybe I'll just put a single door here. A single one by two door. So this will be a wall, meaning that these path blocks need to go. And what I'll do is I'll have path blocks here instead. And because path blocks aren't a complete block, underneath the... I should have done this. Underneath the door will be a... a cobble block. Because these path... these path blocks, farm stone blocks, see how they don't quite meet... Um, the same height? When they don't meet the same height like that, it also means that it won't fully enclose a room either. So this will be the sort of living area. Once complete. And then this here can be sort of the walkway area, the thoroughfare. And I'll probably eventually have like paths all the way out so that I can run up to my base more easily. I'm about to have to go get my bronze pick though. I've been uh, breaking this pick pretty good. I mentioned this uh, last stream, but like, pro tip, never fully break your last pick or last hammer. If you break your last pick and your last hammer and you don't have um, ore to melt down into a mold, you are now back into the stone or the flint age if you break your last tool. I've done it. Playtesting feels bad, man. Feels bad to all of a sudden be back in the stone age when you're like, oh God, I was riding high with like iron and bronze tools and now now I've got nothing. It's 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 funny but it sucks. Because um because, because a pick is obviously required to um uh to mine ores and then the hammer is required to break those chunks into smeltable bits. So if you don't have either of those things you're just like SOL. And you can't melt down old tools. That's actually one of the highest suggested things besides making your own sticks from wood is uh, tool repair. Uh, armor you can repair. So the the lamellar armor that I want to make, not out of copper, but bronze, um, is either pelts and a bunch of the plates. But then when it's broken, you can just merge the broken armor with plates to repair it. So armor and clothing is repairable, but tools and weapons are not um, in its current state. There's no, like, whetstone or grind wheel or anything like that. I think it's possibly going to be a feature that gets added at some point, but, like, it's not in yet. So um, so once a tool's broken, it's gone. It just, like, gets erased. You know, what I could do is uh, I could have it be, uh... Door. 
door on either side. Mikus, thank you for the resub and catching a stream. At the buzzer. So then, uh, because it's cheap and, well, cost effective, I wall this back wall up with, uh, with just regular old dirt because it will enclose it because I'm not planning on having this be a permanent wall so there's no point in putting cobble down here anyway. Let me turn the lights on so you can kind of see the layout of this starter room. It's simple, but I'll get the job done. Um, before I return back... Okay, yeah. No bunny is making this jump from this side. Or that side. Okay, so I, I'm pretty sure I'm bunny safe. For now. And I'm just going to purposely fully break my pick, because it's almost broken. I'll just dig a little bit more granite up until it breaks. What else am I planning on making out of bronze? So, uh, once I have a little bit more bronze, probably a bronze shield. Uh, because shields... Up oh, there, there it goes. Shields will help me, you know, fight things. Um, bronze shield, and then bronze. Just continually resupplying bronze picks, as uh, I'm probably going to go through bronze picks quicker than any other tool. Yeah, the atmospheric storms and, like, regional weather is very cool. So it's, it's a feature I really like in this game. The The world feels so much more realistic with just a little bit of um, region, latitude, longitude sort of data. Can I install some infinite light sources in my house? Uh, yeah. As soon as I get, uh, well, with the bronze pick, I can start to mine up quartz, and some of the quartz I'm going to mine up will be clear quartz. And then with two ingots of metal, I can hammer them into a plate. And with uh, the candle, the plates, and the metal... Oh. I have a storm coming. I'm going to lose my sanity. <laughs> well, there's the anvil. I don't have a forge yet. Forge is a bunch of cobblestone. Like this. Where do we even want to put a forge? I don't really want to put a forge here because I want to live here. It's just a little light, light, light storm. Let's, uh... What's the light level? Well, but we're gonna find out. By the way. Oh, whoops. I was burning charcoal this whole time. That was That's dumb. Charcoal's precious, and I just melted it down for nothing. So I can't sleep right now, because uh, there is a a storm happening, a temporal storm. Why wasn't I warned? Oh, yeah, okay, light storm approaching imminent. Got it. And it's um, you can think of it as like a psychosis event, or like a rip in space time, 
it gets sort of into the lore of the game. And the TLDR is not something I can offer you easily because, like, I don't know the lore perfectly. But essentially, there's, like, two worlds. There's Rust World and Our World. And during the storms, the bridge between the two worlds is weakest. So... I am going insane because the rift between the the separate the worlds are not s as separate as I would like them to be. I gotta put a torch down right in the middle of the base. Uh, so I'm also planning on bringing the forge and anvil over to the new base, um, and then I want to start moving everything over as possible. So the what's the melt temperature of the bronze ingot? 950 so I'd have to do this in charcoal. Uh hmm. I'm going to try to run for some charcoal so that I can actually make myself a, a weapon. Probably a bad idea given the uh the current state of affairs. Alright, five charcoal's fine. And on standard server settings, you can't sleep during um, temp uh, the temporal storms. So, I can't just, like, go to sleep and make the crazies go away. You can set up your servers to allow for that, but I don't have mine set up for that. So in order, uh, you're about to witness something else that's really cool. I'm going to be working metal for the first time. Move this anvil here, nice and center. So put the bronze on the forge, and what the bron what the forge essentially does is it allows you to reheat metals because when they're cold, you can't just like hammer them out. So that um, that ingot there is going to get hot, so that I can work it. Okay. Where's my hammer? There it is. So once the ingot is roughly half of its melt temperature, you can start working it. So the ingot melts. Uh, the melting temperature. Once it hits like roughly six, five, six hundred C, I can start working it. And it, it burns any sort of coal. It just doesn't burn peat or things like that. It has to be a coal type, like anthracite, black coal, coke, charcoal, etc. And you could take this, hold left shift, and stick it on, and you can see all the things that I can make. I'm gonna get it like warmer though, so that I I'm not it's not a time trial before it melts. Alright, that's nice and hot. So here's the things I can do. Uh, arrowheads, axe head, the sword, the bronze boss for the shield, a chisel, a cleaver for killing tamed animals, nails and strips, which allows you to make things like chests and trunks, chains, knife blades, hoops, that's also for shield, a hoe. Also, you know how I have like molds for my tools? I can also just make this into uh, like a shovel or a pick, pickaxe, prospecting, so you don't necessarily need moles once once you have an anvil and um, and uh, an ingot. So here is how to make uh, a sword tip. And I am going to pull the metal out towards me. Moving voxel by voxel to form the sword's blade, the fox's blade. And the temporal storm's over, which is nice. It was a short one. And that uh, cyan gear that you see on my screen that's spinning, that's like... You could think... Oh, that was a mistake. Um, it, it, it's sort of like uh, my sanity, I guess. Or the... Really the, like, reality and stability. Um, 
Uh, let's do the back first. Fill all the, these voids. And if the piece of metal that you're working on gets too cold, you can just pick the whole thing up and stick it back in the forge and reheat it. And I know that I know that you can right click to rotate. I just find that to be um, less. I, I'd rather just rotate my body around it. I find that to be easier personally. So that I don't have to go into the F menu constantly. But I'm sure like people wanted to tell me that, oh, you can just rotate the project. It's like, yeah, I'm aware. So there's a few extra voxels um, that I'll cut off once I'm done. But if you you can absolutely mess up a project, you can cut the wrong voxels and end up with not enough metal to actually complete the thing. And if that's ever the case, you can add another heated ingot to the thing you're working on um, in order to finish it. So we go. Here is my scythe or my fox head. And uh, now I have a weapon. I have a proper proper weapon that does a lot more damage. So the spears here, poking was two hit points per poke and five piercing damage when thrown. This sword is 4.3 per swing. Yeah. So pretty good use of my last bronze, I think. Uh, what time is it in game? One in the morning? Mm, who needs to sleep, right? All right, so the other thing I wanted to do is to start to move my stuff over. Um, but I think before that, I would want a door, which means I need copper. So the last thing, because I know I'm almost out of time, is get a little copper for a saw blade. So there's no, uh, there's no form for a saw blade. You can't pour crucible metals into a into a mold for a saw blade. Saw blades have to be made on anvils. Um, so I need at least 20 native nuggets of copper in order to make myself a, uh, a saw blade. So that's what I'm going to try to do like at the buzzer of this stream. Because with a bronze pick, it shouldn't take me very long. And I also have prospecting. It's just going to be a little dark. Uh, yeah, whatever. I don't, I don't care. Party's almost over. I know, right? Whoa. Jumped over that hole. I need to mark that down as a problem. All right, so I already mined this all up. This one. So I'm going to delete it because there's not copper down there anymore. There's like a minuscule amount, but it's it's not worth me like hunting for it. Plus, it was a poor note anyway, so it wasn't paying me very good. So I marked down that there was copper. Oh, at tongs. There was copper here, somewhere. Let's go find it. First things first, make sure we have the right area. So I'm going to do a node search. Trace amounts of copper. Uh, so maybe wrong direction. Trace amounts doesn't mean none. Just means there ain't a lot. Whoa. Sand fault. So if there's zero, I know I'm going in the wrong direction. If there's more this direction, I'm in the right direction. Small amounts. So it is more towards this way than the way before. Got it. So 
So I'm actually going to cut the difference and say maybe it's this direction. Because once you commit to, like, digging around, uh, you spend a lot of tool durability, so you, you should be close first. Small amounts. Okay, so I'm guessing in this sort of quadrant in this direction. It's the right way to search. But you'll also notice that my, um, my pick goes through the, um, the stone, you know, a lot faster. Not a lot faster, but definitely faster, because it's a higher quality. And in all of my genius, I left my flint behind, so I can't even make myself a new shovel, because my shovel's about to break. Still small amounts? Okay, there's got it's gotta be around here somewhere. I know that this will make me hungrier, but I'm gonna have my torch in my offhand. Because it's easier for you guys to see what the hell I'm doing. You know, I'm actually just below the dirt. My guess is I'm not deep enough. small amounts. I'm like in the right area. Try this way. Nope. It's funny, my character is like sitting on the ground mining. Really weird sight to behold. Where are you, man? My speed run to a saw blade is just not going well. Alright, is it lower? Still verified small amounts? Yeah, I'm going to keep going down thinking that it's probably just, like, trolling me and is lower than I think it should be. Also, what, oh, I'm listening to the trader. I was like, what is that weird noise? I think it's just the trader, because uh, there's a luxury goods trader near me, and I think he's just, like, chatting to himself, like all sane people do. All right, I'm pretty damn low at this point. I don't think it would be any lower than this, but what I can do is I can check. So in order to check, what I could do is I could dig a pit here and um, and then do a node search. No near, no nearby. So I know that it's not within six tiles there. Um, but uh, I'm probably not going to have the time to find it because uh, the rattling my my toddler is. Uh, is going to have a meltdown if I take any longer. So. Verify trace amounts. Yeah, it's somewhere around here, but it's it's going to have to, uh, it's going to have to wait. Family calls. You might even be able to hear him in the, in the background here. Because he's, he's not happy. <laughs> All right, getting out of here. So, probably the first order of business, like, next stream, if you guys vote for this to continue, is to get a saw blade, and then, um, to get some, like, uh, metal bits to start making, um, trunks and buckets and, you know, everything else that allows me to do proper high-volume organization, and, uh, and to also get doors and to actually make it look a bit like a home. Because I currently live in a cave that I 
pack dirt into the doorway in order to to not you know get eaten alive at night which is uh which is pretty sketchy pretty sketchy indeed I'm having a real bad luck trying to find this uh just subsurface copper too I have a bad track record of just failing at that but friends that is all the time I have Thank you for tuning in to Vintage Story, which originally streamed live on Twitch November 9th. If you have any questions for me, please let me know in the comments below. But if you're looking to provide feedback, I'm not looking for backseating for this series. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timer to upcoming streams. If you would like to keep this series going, make sure to vote for it when it comes up in the polls. The best way to be informed is to join Discord, a link can be found in the description of this video or at rodamont.com. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell.